Hello and welcome back to MBV. I'm Casper and today we're going to take a look at how to pressure test the cooling system of your project car. So if you've watched my previous videos, you know that we are leak testing the Mustang. Now this is a good example for anyone out there who might want to try to diagnose fluid leaks on your car at home. And in the first video, we did a UV dye in the oil in order to help diagnose where an oil leak might occur. Now we found a slight oil leak, but it's a very slight oil leak. And while I still want to fix it, it's not accounting for everything I saw in the small puddle on the back of the water pump. So now we're going to go on to pressure testing the cooling system. Now when you pressure test the cooling system, you will need a pressure test kit and you will need an adapter that will fit the top of your radiator. The way this kit works is it essentially replaces your radiator cap with something that you can connect to to pressurize the system with a small amount of pressure and then diagnose either the loss of pressure over time, which tells you that there's a leak, or actually you'll see something leaking out of somewhere, which will tell you where the leak is. If you're losing pressure without seeing a leak externally, you might have a bad head gasket or something leaking internally, and that's a whole different, more in-depth testing to do, but I'm 90% sure this is gonna be an external leak on the Mustang, so this should be relatively easy. Let's go ahead, crack into this pressure test kit that I have, and see what we're working with. The pressure testing kit I have here is a generic Amazon testing kit. Um, some Chinese kit that I'm sure is sold under multiple names. It has many different adapters for different cooling systems. In my particular case, I'll probably just need this standard sized radiator cap replacement item, and I will need the pressure tester. So the pressure tester here is basically just a glorified bicycle pump with a gauge on it. So this will allow us to put a few pounds of pressure into the system and begin to test whether or not there's a leak. Now, one thing to bear in mind is I will be pressure testing my system to a much higher level than you would probably do with most cars, simply because I have a 1.3 bar radiator cap and that'll put it very close to the 20 PSI mark, which is way higher than most radiator systems need to be. 10 to 15 PSI is plenty to test with most systems. So let's go ahead, test fit this and replace the radiator cap. All right, now that we have the radiator cap replacement on there, we can attach the pressure kit and begin pressure testing. Now, if I was pressure testing a normal car, just some friend of mine's who brought it by, this is about as high as I would go. Right here around 10, 11 PSI. That would tell me if I'm having a problem but as you can see, the outer numbers are in bar, the inner numbers are in PSI, and this radiator cap that we are using here is a 1.3 bar radiator cap. Now, to properly test that, that means I need to go ahead and bump this up to at least 1.3 bar. Now, if you noticed, it might have been hard to see, the needle dropped and started to move and it's slowly losing pressure. And I think I can hear a drip. So let's go ahead, take a look and see if we can find out where it's leaking. As you can see here, we have a nice puddle of coolant forming. This is just below the water neck and I currently still have pressure applied. So you can still see that it is causing more and more leakage as we wait. But this chrome water neck is a fairly cheap water neck that I used simply because the one off the 289 was off at powder coating. And now that I know that the cheapo O-ring is leaking on it, I will go ahead and replace the unit. I will probably just silicone in the old one now that it's powder coated because it also had an additional temperature port. So let's go ahead and look at taking back off the pressure tester. Now that we've diagnosed where the leak is, we can disassemble this pressure test kit. Now, just like when your car has been running for a little while, if you just remove the hose or this cap, you're gonna get a geyser of coolant coming out of here because it's under pressure. Now, it won't be scalding hot because we haven't been running the car, but it is super gross to get covered in coolant. 
So they provide you a pressure relief button on the side of the hose here. This can spray coolant if your coolant system's totally full. So what I would do is cover it with a rag when you push it and slowly let it off until you get to zero. Hold it open for a second and make sure that you're totally low on pressure. Then cover the fitting when you pop it loose. That way any little bits of coolant spraying out will be caught and not spray all over your car. Once you have the pressure tester out of the way, then what we got to do is get rid of the adapter and put the radiator cap back on. Now, be careful when you remove the tester because it does have an O-ring on a lot of them and you don't want to mess up your O-ring. And then make sure you put your radiator cap back so that you don't forget that it's loose and try to run the car again. Using the pressure testing kit, we have diagnosed a small cooling leak on the water neck. Now that we know it's there, I can begin the process of pulling the parts that I need to fix the problem. Now, if you have to diagnose a similar problem at home, I would strongly recommend renting one of these kits from somewhere like AutoZone or Kinex, unless you think you're gonna need it a lot in the future, at which point buying makes a lot more sense. I believe this kit was about 50 bucks off of Amazon, I don't really remember, but it covers a wide range of cars. Just make sure you get a kit that has the adapter for the size of radiator or cooling system adapter that works with your particular car. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.